I'm helping to start a drone club in my high school, and I saw your segment from a previous live stream on this. Will you take a look at the list? Link in the Discord. Thank you for a $5 super chat. Uh, where's this list in the Discord, Blunty? Do you got that handy? Link for drone club list. I got it. Um, let's see what we got here. Ah, we have an equipment list. All right, well, for $5 Super Chat, I'll go through. Um, radio Master Pocket. Yeah, it's a great starter radio. It's the least expensive starter radio. Uh, that's good. Batteries. Velocidrone. Not bad. You're going to need more than one Velocidrone license, aren't you? Or is they have some kind of a... Like a, a education and academic license. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, next strap, debatable. Oh, I see. This is per simulator. I see. Uh, next strap, debatable. You could save yourself, you know, seven dollars if you didn't want that. I like a next strap, but especially for a radio like the Pocket, people will hold it in their hands. Uh, it's fine. Depends on your budget. Um, per drone, Mobula Seven, fine choice. Uh, we bleed FPV batteries. Are these the good ones? Are you getting the good ones? You are getting, oh, good choice. Those are great batteries. Totally get that. V-Fly Whoop Store. Why are you getting two V-Fly Whoop Stores per drone? Seems excessive. I think one Whoop Store per drone is probably fine. Like how many batteries? You, you can definitely keep up with yourself with one per drone. Barrel plug. What What is that for? What are you going to power it with? You gonna, what are you going to power it with? That's gonna, that plug is going to go on. I don't know. Also, why are there 0 0.2 plugs per drone? That, do, that doesn't seem right. Fat Shark Echo goggles. Uh, okay. That's, a, that's fine. That's fine. You could do worse. 100 bucks for a set of analog goggles. Not bad. Okay. Oh, here's the power supply for the whoop store chargers. Um, that's overkill. You don't need 400 watts. Unless you're running like all... Are you going to run all the chargers? I see. You're going to run all the chargers off this one power supply, aren't you? Okay, now the, now the uh, plugs make sense. I still don't think you need more than one whoop store per drone, though. And maybe not even that many. Uh, we got some gates. Fine. Nuclear as a timing system. Highly recommend. Well worth the money. Good. Fine. All good. Looking good. Um, 12 sim setups. Eight drones. Fixed costs. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Uh, Fat Shark Echo, I do not think, comes with a battery. I think you will need, a, like, a two-cell battery. Or I think it can power off a USB as well. But, um... Does it have a built-in? Even if it has a built-in, does it have a built-in battery? USB-C charge port. I see. It must have a built-in battery. Maybe it does come with a battery. Hmm... Because it's got a charge port, and it doesn't have any DC input jack that I can see. Let's see if we can get a bottom view. No, no, there's no DC input. So it must have an internal battery, probably an 18650, and it charges off of USB-C. So that's nice. Uh, you're going to want some good USB-C chargers or power banks to run those off of. Should I get the batteries direct connect or pigtail? That depends. If you're getting the Mobula 7, is the pigtail long enough? Uh, I probably... Um... I don't know. It doesn't... I'm not sure that that pigtail is going to be long enough. I think you're going to need pigtail batteries because I don't think this pigtail will reach around to the direct connect batteries uh, if you get them. So I would get the pigtail batteries. Yep. Yeah. yeah, all right. Yep. Checks out.
I, I, uh, that's my thoughts. Best of luck. McShakey at PV. McShakey uh, is uh, in the Discord, too, so thank you, McShakey, for being a patron. What impact to PIDs or flight characteristics would putting 11-inch props on my 10-inch quad have? I bought a pair to see if they fit, and they do. Wondering what to look out for. Uh, uh, honestly, man, the difference between 10 and 11-inch, probably nothing. Because here's the thing. You probably didn't tune the PIDs to, like, the edge of performance. Like, think about it. If you if you tuned that 10 inch drone to the absolute limit, so it was performing as good as possible, but if anything changed, now ah the whole pid tune is just broken, right? If you were to do that, then if you go from 10 inch to 11 inch, everything's going to change. It's not going to be good. You're going to have to retune it. Most people don't do that. Most people's pid tune is let's call it say 80%, 85%. If 100% pid tune is like you've perfectly tuned it to the edge of performance. Most people's pid tune is let's say an 80 or 85% pid tune, maybe even worse than that. And that means that there is a lot of buffer, a lot of headroom for things to change. And now the PID tune, instead of being an 85% perfect PID tune, you put different props on it. Now it's an 80% perfect PID tune. It's a little bit worse of a PID tune, or maybe it's a little better, depending on which direction your PIDs were, like, off, right? But probably, because you probably didn't PID tune it with an inch of a life, its life on the 10-inch props, change to 11-inch probably is going to make that big of a difference. Now, theoretically, like, what I would expect to see is... The 11-inch props are going to make more thrust. So you would think that you would have to decrease the P gains because P gains are usually roughly proportional to the thrust-to-weight ratio. Um, on the other hand, if you didn't change your motor size, the motors are going to be a little bit less responsive. So it's possible that that would balance out. Like if the motors are less responsive, you want to increase your P gains to get more response to get to push the motors harder to make them respond faster. The the real answer is uh, I don't know. The real answer is it depends on many factors. And I think if you said I'm going from 10 inches to, to 15 inches or thir maybe even 13 inches, you know, then you'd start seeing some differences. But I I think that from 10 to 11 inches, you're just not even going to notice much difference unless you have tuned it to within an inch of its life to begin with. And if you tuned it to within an inch of its life on 10 inches, then just do that again on 11 inches, and you'll be right where you need to be. A little bit of a cop-out answer, but that's my honest answer. What's the best way to calibrate the current sensor? We are talking about current sensor calibration earlier. Um, fully charge your battery on the charger. Go fly for five minutes or so. Look in your OSD at how many milliamp hours the OSD says you discharged. Come back in, charge the battery up again. Look at in your, in your charger how many milliamp hours the charger says you put back into the battery. Now you have two numbers. You have the charger, which is the actual number because presumably the charger is accurate. And you have the OSD. And if those two numbers are not the same, adjust your current scale to make them the same. So take the ratio of those two numbers and adjust your current scale by that amount.